Well, here we go again. <laughs> I got this 1971 Johnson Ski Horse, the 25 horse narrow track model, unlike the 30 horse wide track we've been restoring. Uh, I realize that I have, let's see, this weekend to work on the machines. I'm going downstate for two weeks. Then I'll be back, of course, but then I have about two more weekends to get machines ready before our snowmobile show that we're hoping to go to. So I really got to start pushing buttons here, pushing the envelope. This one shouldn't take too much. It was running, well, it was <laughs> about 10 years ago already. My gosh, where is the time gone? I'm gonna think of it. I was in I was in high school when we got this. I'll put up a video or picture. And I uh, ran it. I think my last year was I was a freshman in college. That was gosh, ten years ago. Holy crap. It's barn fresh, you know, she's was never a showpiece. Yeah, but it's solid as heck, minus the seat, of course. It'll clean up, but we're not going to paint her today or this year. We just want to get her running, enjoy her. Um, if I recall, the last show I did with this machine, it uh, wouldn't start. It, it started and we got it to the show and everything and then it just wouldn't start back up. I'm thinking there was a carburetor issue or something. I think there was, to be honest. But we even had a it gone through at the shop I used to work at, Northwestern Boat. And uh, the engine's good and everything. It just, you know, just needs some TLC. So, she still pulls over. Unfortunately, I did take the carburetor off. I think I cleaned it. I also did take the fuel pump off. I think I cleaned it. I don't know. <laughs> well, I found another fuel pump. It's in the garage next door. I have a carburetor back here. Actually, the carburetor for it. Got a double. I'm going to go through it again just to make sure we're still squeaky clean in there. If it's not, well, we can clean her real quick. I do have a better horn for it, carburetor horn. That one. It's like the animals kind of got to it. So, I think I have an ignition switch. I hope I have an ignition switch. I did rob it, I think, to put on the 70 ski horse. It's on the trailer, the big Hulk. Incredible Hulk. So, my hope and my plan is to at least get this thing to pop a little bit today. We're going to check for spark and get the fuel system back in order. And tomorrow I'll go get some gas, some, mix up some gas and oil, and we'll see if she's going to stay running, assuming we can get it to run right now. Without further ado, though, let's get the hood off and uh, do some checking for spark. Well, it doesn't look terrible in there. A little bit of carbon, for sure, a tiny bit of rust, but we're not going to mess with her too much. I am going to spray some fogging oil into there. There we go. Got a lot of rust in there. Whew. Is everything moving okay? Re 
recoil so <laughs> to see the piston move it's pretty cool hey so let's get the plugs hooked up and see if we got any spark alrighty let's see what we got see anything oh yeah we got spark that's pretty incredible. Sitting for 10 years? Jeez. And people say that points are bad. Poo poo to them. All right, well, let's get her back together and get the carburetor on. Let's see if she won't uh, talk to us a little bit here. Okay, here's the carburetor. Like I said, it was. When I, it was sitting in the pole barn for the longest time. When I brought it up here, I had it sitting on the trailer, unfortunately like that. So when we brought it up here, unfortunately, it's been sitting for a few months. So, regrettably, it's time we go through this and pray that everything's okay. I'm seeing water here, I'm a little nervous, but what you get, play games, you know, just time gets away from me. I might need two hands for this. Let me find a place to set you all up. Alright, you're in your aerial perch there. The beautiful thing about these carburetors, the OMC Tilliston carburetors, normal Tilliston carburetors have a fuel pump down below here. You know, it sticks on, sticks down below, whatever. Um, and when I say normal, I mean like uh, Polaris, the early Polaris, 1970 Charger, the 1970 Skidoo's, Olympics, uh, anything that has a Tillerson, they got that fuel pump here on the bottom. And what it is is just extra diaphragms that pulsate with the engine vacuum. Johnson and Evanrood wanted to be different for whatever reason, I, I don't know. They said, no, eh, we don't need that fuel pump. We make outboards. We have our own. And there's that. So it uses an external fuel pump. Ooh, that's kind of gross. I'm kind of poop and goop on it. Um, anyways, a lot of guys do is they don't know where to get parts for these things, so they'll put a Makuni on. Well, that's great. How mm. Still could, yeah. However, the Makuni carburetors. Let me get you a little. The Makuni carburetors operate at a higher pressure than these, so it can cause your engine to flood out really easily. Anybody ask me, I always say, look, just rebuild your old one. What's wrong with it? You know, it just needs new diaphragms. You can get them from any OMC BRP dealer, or I know places. You know, I have, I have a source for parts. I happen to work for them. You know, Northwestern boat. We've got all kinds of parts. So, I'm trying to get this can to warm up here. Gas concealer. All right, so let's see the damage. I don't have another one of these kits, so I'm going to try to be careful as I break it. You know. Already broke the seal, the gasket. The 
Yep, kind of chewed up. It's also wet. Let's see if I can find another one. Other than that, though, I mean, inside here is, is in good shape, thankfully. sticking a little bit so we'll take we'll just take it apart and spray her out real fast take long gotta be careful because there's a spring here that will get launched across the room not careful at all this never had fuel in it why is it sticking I don't know I'm gonna put it back together I was to clean it out, I changed my mind. If it ain't broke, why fix it, right? Got bigger fish to fry. I do, I think I have some more of those gaskets now that I think about it. Originally, this used a, um, I'll think of the title later. It's like a glass ball inside the needle and seat. I don't know how it works, I have no clue. But I'm old fashioned. I like the needle and seat better. Old fashioned. Let's double check our screens here. The choke is a little bit stiff. Oh, because it's bent. Oh, jeez. Who bent the choke? bent but you know what it's fine. It's a nine six half inch. <laughs> nine six half inch, yeah. That's what it is, but half seven sixteenths. I wasn't even right. I used to do this often. I don't it's been so long. So we're just checking the little screens in here. Make sure they're clear. Oh yeah. Set a layer of crud in there. Okay. Check our settings. Half one quarter. Okay. I'm gonna say one and a half. Just to say it. Everything's looking great on this. I think we're okay. So all I'm going to do is replace this gasket, assuming I can find another one. Um, fuel pump, on the other hand, not sure how that's going to work out. Half. One. Alright, that's okay. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about that. Let me go look for another one of these. See if I can't get the diaphragm out.
Okay. Yeah, the diaphragm is beautifully soft, malleable. So we're not even going to mess with that. So just need to find a new gasket. Sheesh. Creeps. Yeah, these things don't like to get wet, I guess. Okay. Well, let's find one and we'll be back. Alrighty, here we are back at the machine. I'm getting ready to put this intake manifold back on. It's been off for a long time. But what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this uh, gasket sealing compound on part number 317201. Well, that was the original part number. You could also use the mercury goop stuff, but... Eh. This will just help to seat the, the uh, gasket and then we'll put a little bit on the threads just to help them make sure that they'll come back out without any issue. Oops. Avoiding any major holes there. You can also just put this right on the gasket itself. This isn't super necessary, but this is how I was taught. Just so it creates a really good seal. See, we do have our gasket right there. Ain't pretty, but she'll work. Sorry, I got my finger in the way here. Hope I can do this one handed. It's windy outside, so those creaking you're hearing is the door. The heater is barely keeping up. It's standable in here, but boy, you go outside, whew. Believe it or not, there's no snow here in the Keweenaw. There's a storm happening down st eight. Whoa, I almost died there. Which I'm kind of jealous about, but is what it is the little little is what it is you know My goal for tonight is to get this thing to the point where it will uh, we can spray some fogging oil in her and hear her run for a minute. That's the goal anyways, we'll see how far we get. So that way theoretically tomorrow all we'll have to do is uh, hook the fuel lines up which I have some fresh over there from new fuel lines. I'll get some fresh gas tomorrow. And oil, because I don't have any oil, believe it or not. Hmm. There we go. Last one. That was a tricky buzzard. So, anyways, they're all in. Let's tighten them down and away we go. Okay, so we got the carburetor all back on. I did spray some fogging oil in there. We'll see if that does anything. It may not have enough oomph to go. We'll see. Well, let's see if she's going to pop for us a little bit. Let me figure out where to set you guys up. Alright. Is it 
hasn't been running in a while. to make sure I didn't put any steel wool in the doohickey. The exhaust. That would have been... Nope, we're clear. Okay. It's all coming back to me why this we stopped riding this thing. I'm gonna turn over real quick. Alright, number two. Check that timing tomorrow. Shouldn't backfire like that. I mean, a little is okay, but not like that. So huh. weird. At least there's a little bit of life in there. Oh well, we'll find out. Stay tuned, more tomorrow. Okay, we got everything together here. I did put all new fuel lines in, well, for the most part. We got fresh gas in the tank. <coughs> Let's see if she's gonna start now. Just a moment. Technical difficulty.
him up there now. Sucker. Your four nice primes.
right time. Okay, well, I didn't want to go this far, but I don't like giving up. So what we did is we took the old condenser off. I'm going to clean that crap out of there. Uh, took the old condenser off and uh, checked her out. This little critter, which is your timing cam, uh, is fine. No issues there. Flywheel's good. Um, so I took, I'll, you know, I'll clean the points real quick. Um, so I took everything apart. I tested the condenser. Absolutely no readings on the ohm scale. So, there's, um, so I got a new condenser here. Uh, right there. That we are going to throw in and... Hopefully that'll give us what we need. I think what was happening is there was enough spark to um, spark, you know, to hit the stroke. Excuse me. There was enough spark to spark when the plugs were out, but there wasn't enough spark to push through the compression. That's my thought anyways. Um, except for when we threw the carburetor cleaner in, there it would generate just enough to burp. To backfire like that just enough barely enough so put a new condenser in I'll check these coils I'm pretty sure I've had them checked before but we'll check them again and then uh, keep going try her out so be right back okay new condensers installed it's primed let's try it <coughs> That's the compression on the front cylinder. According to the book, she should have at least minimum of 105. It might be the end for this old girl. <laughs> 